Okay, so there is a part two to this particular lecture only because I, for some reason, thought there were only 12 problems in this section, but there's actually 15. So let me finish these up before we move on to 9.2. Um, so for number 13, it says, describe what is misleading in the visual display of data. A says the chart is too small. That's not gonna warp the data. B, the colors of the chart are too light and distort the data. That's not true either. It doesn't matter what the colors are. Just the fact that they are different colors is enough. Um, C, the title does not explain what is being displayed. Um, the title says it's the percentage of the world's computers in use by country. That pretty much sums up what's going on. And then D, the percentages do not add up to 100. Now that is definitely true. Your percentages are 29, four, four, five, six, and nine. And if you're talking about a pie and you wanna fill up the whole pie, then the percentages should add up to be 100. So that's gonna be option D. Now for number 14, it says, describe what is misleading in the following visual display of data. Um, choose the correct answer below. So it says the bars are not scaled proportionately in terms of the data they represent. So these bars are not spaced out. Like there's two years that go here, one year that's in between there. And that's true, but we're talking about different movies. And what we're really concerned about is the number of the amount of uh, box office receipts that they have. Not necessarily when the movie was created with respect to time. Okay. I mean, yes, they do include the years here but that's not really what's important. What's important is the movie that we're talking about and then the amount of money that it made, okay? Um, and so the years really are not a big factor in this. Now it says the images in front or behind each bar make it look as though the bars are taller than they really are. And this is true because look at the example of uh, Dream Girls and Hairspray. Um, this character is here and it's really hard to tell that, the, I mean, unless you're really, really trying to concentrate and look, that the bar actually stops here. It doesn't go all the way to the top of her head. On this one, she's short and the bar is here, but it actually goes all the way up to her head. Here, same thing, the bar ends here, but her head ends there. Here, he's standing there, but the bar actually ended down here and so on and so forth. So it does get a little confusing with those, those images in there. But I didn't wanna select it just yet, so I did go ahead and go through the others and outroll those before I selected B. Um, it says the wrong impression has been created about how the data are changing because equally spaced intervals are not used on the horizontal axis. That is literally saying the same thing as before. It is a measurement of money which we're looking at and the measurements of money are accurate. So it doesn't matter the number, what year the film was made in. We're not doing a measurement based on the year that it was filmed in we are, or released. We're just doing the, scaling the amount of money for each different kind of musical. Um, so it's definitely not C. And then D says the scale of the vertical axes makes the differences in bar height look larger than they really are. Um, and that's not true because the dollar amounts on the vertical axes are actually uh, equally spaced out in equal intervals. So they're going by 20s, right? 20, 40, 60, 80. So there's no misrepresentation there with the dollar amounts. So it is not D. So then that brought me back to B. B was the only other true statement there. And so I selected B. Now, finally, we get to the last uh, problem here and it says 15, construct a grouped frequency distribution for the data to the right, showing the length and miles of 25 rivers. Use five classes that have the same width. So what we do is we go into this chart and we find the lowest number, which is 654 and we find the highest number which happens to be 2560 and we take that difference and then we divide it by the five classes and so we end up with 381 which is about a 400 uh, width okay so as long as your widths are 
around 400, it could be 300, it could be 500, but it has to be around 400, okay? That would make sense for the five classes. So what they've done here is I just wanted to find the, the, the amount in each one of these classes. So in here, I did 999 minus 500. I got the difference of 499. Here, I took the difference. I got 399. Right there, I would have already known that these are not equal classes, okay? The classes do have to have the same width, and these two did not, so that was already outruled. When I did it on this one, I got 499 midway through, but then all of a sudden, I got these two different numbers at the bottom. So this does not have equal width. Here, I took all the differences, and this one did have the equal width. Okay, and then now what I should have done is once I figured out that these were all equal width is I needed to put in the frequency. So between 500 and 999, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I have 11 of these. Then between 1,000 and 1,400, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then between 1500 and 1999, I have um, one, two, three. And then 2000 to 240, I just have this guy here. And then 2500 to 29, I have this one here. And so that's the frequency table. So you had to make sure that they all had the same width and then you could enter the number of that of data that meet that class criteria. Now this is the end of the section and I will see you in the next video.